Hello everybody and welcome back to Tyrion something or other. Tyrion Cuthbert, attorney of the Arcane. I almost said Arcane, that would be incorrect. On the last episode, we were introduced to Tyrion, his mentor, and to the to the and then we also met the the Cuthberts of Celeste and uh, Flintheart. I think I got some of those names wrong. But basically, uh, Celeste's dad got stabbed. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that uh, Celeste isn't found guilty of that murder. Where is she? Oh, what am I going to do now? You hear a faint voice. Could it be? No! Oh. As you peer behind an old tree, you finally found her. She looks just as tired as you are. Probably even more so. Her eyes are puffy and red. She's doing her best to give you a sight smile. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, sorry. I guess when we woke you up. Is everything okay? It's nothing. Eh, well, it's just an argument. But from the way she reacted, this is clearly not common. But it's none of your business. You can decide not to pry further. Have you been looking for me all this time? I have. Thank you. But I'm okay now. I should head back. What about you? I think I'm gonna stay out a little longer. I feel that you shouldn't mind your own business, but... I'm sure whatever happened between you two, it's nothing you can't talk out. It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes Mr. Mora and I get into fights too. But no matter what happens, we were always able to talk about it. I... Sorry, I, I know it's none of my business. I just... I really appreciate it. Thank you. Damn, she's feeling all sorts of emotions. Three out of four. Let's get let's get her angry too while we're at it. You're right. Let's go back. <sighs> what? We come back to the McCoy Tavern, but it's now surrounded by several carriages and people clad in plate armor. Is that the Inquisition? What? The Arcane Inquisition. An order of knights that investigate crimes committed using magic. To say the word crime, you and Celeste share a glance and come to the same realization. Both of you rush towards the tavern, but Celeste outpaces you by a large margin. What? No! 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 She reaches the tavern before you, and before anyone can stop her, she takes a look inside the inn. Whatever she saw in there makes her cry out in anguish. She dropped to the ground in tears. There she is! Celeste McCoy, by the authority of the White God Crown, you're under arrest! Holy fuck, this music! Let's, let's just take a second, let's just take a little second. Good shit. That's some good shit right there. I say, I say, that's some good shit. Uh, Haunting Slash when the knight steps forward, and steps forward and grabs her. Surprisingly, she's able to break free from his grip and tries to push further into the tavern. There's a commotion. Three other knights rush to grab her and begin dragging her away. She kicks and screams against them, desperately trying to break free. In between the three knights, it's taking all their strength to subdue her. What are you doing to her? What is going on here? Tyrion! Mr. Mora approaches you. You breathe a small... You breathe sm breathe small a sigh of relief. You breathe a small sigh of relief when you see that she's okay. Mr. Mora! Bah. 
I should have known that he was one of yours. Just stay out of our way. Mr. Moore, what's going on? Why is the Inquisition here? I'm surprised myself. But from what I understand, Fenhan McCoy has been murdered. Murdered? Oh, okay. I realized I had these. I thought. Okay. I should have waited a little longer. That would have made things a little flow with the bit. It's fine. You follow the Inquisition back to the city where Celeste has been detained. According to Ms. Tamora, Celeste was the prime suspect in Flynnhardt's murder. Due to the supposed nature of the crime, her case would be pushed to trial immediately. But many elements of the situation still don't make sense. Inquisition only investigates crimes committed using magic. So why is Celeste her prime suspect? Could she be a mage? This is ridiculous. She has the right to speak to an attorney. Anyways, you find yourself met with another hurdle. A very incompetent one. Yeah, well, let's see if we got that you're saying. I can see about raw sales. Her trial is in an hour. How has she not been processed yet? I don't know why I tell you, kid. I wish I could help. You don't need the you don't need the UCI to know that's a complete lie. So you're really planning on defending her? Do you know if she can even afford a lawyer? I I just can't stand here and do nothing. You saw them, didn't you? There's no way she would murder her own father. Hmm. <sighs> I know that look. I was saving this for a special occasion, but... <gasps> Magical runes don't ask you to take pictures of crime scenes and write notes telepathically. Every attorney has one. It's almost like a badge for them. We've got to... We could show this to everybody we meet. Yes! This is... An attorney's runestone. If you're going to defend her, you're going to need one. Hi. You begin to tear up. You've won one of these since you were a child. Aww. It's basically a badge of honor for attorneys. Don't cry, Cuthbert. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, keep this in mind. If you try to defend her, the Inquisition isn't going to fight you fairly. Uh, our court system only exists to create the illusion of justice. They hate people like us. They'll do everything in their power to sabotage you. What is this? America? Blah, 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 blah. Damn it. You knew that they'd try to get in your way. Damn it. You knew you tried. You, you knew that they. <laughs> but you didn't expect them to do this blatantly. Ugh. What's with all the rockets? You. You're that knight from the tavern. Let's command our own white to you, kid. Whoa. Or white. I guess he's like gumshoe if gumshoe went to war. Uh I had a feeling to would be sniffing around this case. But I didn't expect it as a kid to do her dirty work. Come on, Doug. He says that he wants to talk to a mage. And she's got a right to an attorney, doesn't she? Uh well, she ought to be processed. My inner right looks confused for a moment. What the hell kind of bullshit are you trying to pull? Let him throw you, idiot. Yeah, sir. Thanks, bro. That leads you through to the halls of the dungeon. For something built in the capital, it looks extremely old and decrepit. Kind of like your mother. <laughs> uh, comedy. Ooh, prisoners are upset. Pick up the negative emotions of the prisoners nearby. It's a heavy and almost crushing feeling. You always had to avoid crowded places because of how sensitive you are to people's thoughts. You've never felt this much concentrated despair before. Oh, it's you! Celeste was lying down on the cold floor of the dungeon. She's so happy that her father's dead. But she immediately gets up as soon as she sees you. 
What are you doing here? Mr. Morrow told me about what happened to your father. I'm so sorry. I just don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Why would someone do this? Why are they blaming me for it? I'm not sure about the details, but it's clear that there are elements of magic involved in what happened. Oh, sorry. Since they arrested you based on that evidence, I can only conclude one thing. Celeste, you're a mage, aren't you? <laughs> There's no sense in hiding it anymore. Yes, I am. You have noble blood. Of course not. Why would you say that? So sorry. But the ability to use magic is genetic. Most mages tend to have some kind of noble blood. I honestly don't like thinking about that. I'm the daughter of Julian Leonard McCoy. That's all I need to know about myself. Oops. Whatever I see, uh, Jolene. Uh, it would probably be best not push the matter further. Anyways, you were probably arrested before. You were probably arrested because you're a mage. What? Crime was committed using magic, and you were the only mage around at the time. Is that seriously the only reason? I know how to cast one spell. The Arcane Inquisition doesn't care about truth. They only care about closing their cases. Hmm. Celeste, your case is being pushed to trial. You're going to be brought before a judge in an hour. What? No one told me anything. Damn it, they weren't even planning on telling her? Oof. This is... Commentary! If you'll have me, I'd like to be your defense attorney in the coming trial. Right. I forgot that you were an attorney. Would you really do that for me? After everything I've seen them do, I can't just stand by and do nothing. But they're a part of the kingdom. Do I even have a chance? It's hopeless. Man, king, or god, I won't let them do anything to you. What? Sorry. It's just something I have a habit of saying. Oh, I don't apologize. It was a bit cringe, but... Aren't we all, you know? I really appreciate that you're doing this. It's clear this entire situation is better sweet for her. More bitter than sweet, I'd imagine. Because the Inquisition slays, you haven't any time to investigate the crime scene. You were confident before, but you're gonna doubt whether or not you can really do this. Everything is happening so fast. It feels unreal. You have to do this. This is the exact reason why you became a lawyer. No matter what happens, you'll acquit Celeste. Alright. Let's fight God or whatever we were talking about. A courtroom. I in a real courtroom. Actually, entering the courtroom took a lot of wind out of your sails. I've never been here as an attorney before. I've only ever been as tomorrow's assistant. <laughs> the woman, the prosecutor's bench is staring at you. Miss Tamora mentioned her before you went to see Celeste. What was her name again? I think it was Arya Steelsome. Arya Steelwind. I love her hair. That's pretty cool. She's no Miss Tamora, but... Why is she staring you down? Is she trying to intimidate you? Because it's working! Bang! <laughs> That's straight up the ace attorney hammer. That's cute. Or in that recession for our trial of Sonash McCoy. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Nope. The prosecution is ready, your honor. Basically just McCoy, but... Oh. <laughs> the defense is also ready, your honor. He doesn't necessarily sound very ready. Regardless, let's begin the proceedings. Prosecutor Stewin, please list the charges. Whoa, technology. The 
defendant is Celeste McCoy, a mercenary for hire and a registered mage. Wait, did she just say mercenary? Yeah, I had to take up a job after my family's tavern was shut down. Oh, right. So you pick mercenary. It's not exactly the first occupation you choose. She's charged with second degree murder. Sorry. She's charged with second degree murder and negligence misuse of the arcane arts. I see. So there was magic involved. Yes. The crime occurred within the McCoy Tavern, a local inn that shut down years ago. The locals reported hearing a loud commotion coming from within the building. Hours later, a carriage driver that was nearby checked the disturbance. It was then that he found the victim, the defendant's sword still impaling his dead body. The Inquisition has provided an autopsy report and a record of the sword. Alright, so the blade is magical. Fatal will show heavy trace of transmutation magic. That's what I was wondering, why? <laughs> I forgot to say this, but I was wondering why this was considered magic, because like, Broski got stabbed, don't seem too magical to me. But alright, God, Celeste's sword. The legend murder weapon, it's an alien designed sword, but it has no magical properties. Now, what was the defendant's relationship with the victim? I see that they share the same last name. The defendant is the victim's daughter, but not by blood. She was adopted into the family when she was an infant. Her birth parents are currently unknown. I see. What a dreadful turn of events. Whoa. What was that little flash? Did I miss him? I'm going to assume I didn't miss anything. She can do evocation? What's evocation? To begin, the prosecution would like to call Commander All White to the stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Names on White. I'm the commander of the Arcane Inquisition. Hon, please tell the court the details of the Inquisition's investigation. Yeah, yeah. Alright. We got a call late at night. Someone discovered a dead body inside of the McCoy Inn. When we arrived on the scene, we found Flynn Art McCoy dead on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside him. We have several witnesses who heard the victim and defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. The argument must have turned ugly because the defendant killed the victim using her magic sword. Hmm. Isn't that really incriminating? One of her possessions is the murder weapon! Fuck! Mr. Cuthbert, you may begin your cross-examination. <laughs> you open your mouth to respond, but nothing comes out. You can't think of anything to say. Everything is blank. Mr. Cuthbert? Hey, what are you doing? This is the part where you say something, right? I, I'm sorry, I don't... Your anxiety is just getting worse. Your breaths are becoming more and more desperate. Are you hyperventilating? Uh, what a disappointment. Uh, I was hoping to fight against the infamous Ruby Tamora today. But it's clear that you can't even hold a candle to her. Is she holding a sword? That's cool. Your Honor, it's clear that the defense has nothing to say against the prosecution's overwhelming evidence. Yeah, this case is pretty open and shut. No, wait! This, this isn't what's supposed to happen! Mm. I'm sorry, Tui. I, I couldn't quit Frey. Alright, that's an name I'll have to try and remember later. She was found guilty. What? <laughs> That means... Are they going to execute her? No. Not again. Are you seriously going to let that happen again? <sighs> Tyrion! Slash so grabs your shoulder and shakes you out of your panic. You need to calm down. Case is calm and focused like the gravity of the situation. But she looks stern. 
not angry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to... Stop! Just listen to me. You know what to do, right? Um, just do it the same way you play chess. What? I don't know. You were just so calm and focused when we were playing before. No matter how close I got to beating you, you always knew how to stay calm and win. So just channel that feeling and look at the pieces. What? So stupid. And yet. <sighs> you take a moment to focus and let everything else disappear from the world. Every statement that he made, every word that came out of his mouth, each of those is a possible weakness that you can attack. Every bleak moment can be turned around. You just need to consider every angle. My apologies for the delay, Your Honor. The defense is ready to begin cross-examining the witness. Very well. Hmm. Here we go. Thank fuck that worked. Carefully examine every statement he made and find something that contradicts the evidence in your notes. Once you do that, present the contradicting evidence and prove that his testimony is false. Alright. Ooh. Wait. Let's listen to this for a second. I fuck with that. I fuck with that a lot. Cross examinations. You are cross examining a witness. Carefully examine your statement. I mean, then the statement that contradicts a clue, a spell, or a profile in your notes. Once you identify the false statement, click the present button and present the contradicting evidence to move forward. All right. Can I look at what I've got? So I've got my attorney's room stone. So that's. Oh, that's probably what she was showing with the autopsy and stuff from her attorney's runestone. So I assume prosecutors have a similar one too. Or maybe like red or something, because they're evil. Uh, that after being stabbed from behind with a magical blade, fatal wounds show heavy traces of transmutation magic. I don't know anything about transmutation though. Why should why should make fun of us like we're we're older than her? What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> no. The legend murder weapon. It's an ornately designed sword, but has no magical properties. That's also important. <sighs> we got a call late at night. Someone discovered a dead body inside the McCoy Inn. When we arrived on the scene, we found Flynn Hot and McCoy's dead body on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. We have several witnesses who heard the victim and defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. The argument must have turned ugly because the defendant killed the victim using his sword. I shouldn't have panicked so much before. This testimony is straightforward, but I will actually make this easier. Assuming that Mr. McCoy is innocent, has to be in a flaw in his logic. You just need to compare every statement to each piece of evidence in the court record. Once you find a contradiction, present that piece of evidence to the contradicting statement. exactly did you get this call? And who discovered the body? The call came in at 1.25 a.m. As for the witness who discovered it, he wanted to remain incognito. It's not unusual for a witness to say anonymous. It's well within their right, but this would be a lot easier if you could question the witness directly. What happened when you arrived, Amanda? Dead on the floor, that adds up. The defendant's sword was, was still inside him. I know, because I saw the sword. 
How did you know that the sword was my client's? The sword's made out of some kind of special alloy. I think it was forged out of country or something. It'd be hard to mistake something like that. We also have several eyewitnesses who verified that the sword belonged to the defendant. She made no effort to hide it from the public. Quite the contrary, she was quite proud to show it off. But even if the sword belonged to my client, that doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean that she was the one who stabbed him. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. This guy, is hard, this guy is a hard voice. I don't do gruff very well. I'm not a very gruff person. I don't know if you can tell. I'm sweet and I'm supple. I'm not gruff. Alright. How did they know it was my client and the victim that were arguing? You were there, weren't you? You had a verdict. Every witness we talked to could tell it was them. <sighs> well. Your Honor, it's clear that the defense is playing devil's advocate. Even he should have recognized their voices. <sighs> well, they have right there. That's conjecture. Weren't there plenty of people around who could have committed the crime? That tavern has been closed for years. The defendant and the victim were the only ones there before the body was discovered. Plus, the murder weapon definitely belonged to her. I've changed this guy's voice like five times. It's hard to prove that someone else was at the crime scene, but you can't help but feel that there's something off about what he just said. Should have panicked something. Theory, this might be stupid. If they were arguing, he must have been turned towards her, right? That's that's my thought project. If, if she killed them while they were arguing, why was he stabbed from the front, right? But here it shows that he was stabbed from the back. So ain't that a little spicy? Let's let's present. Objection! Your Honor, it's clear that the witness's testimony is contradictory. And this piece of evidence proves it. I fail to see how that proves anything, Mr. Cuthbert. Oh. I guess you're right. Fuck. So I'm just gonna read this. The defendant and the victim were the only ones there before the body was discovered. Plus, the murdered weapon definitely belonged to her. It would be hard to prove that someone else was at the crime scene, but he can't have a feel. Well, there wasn't just us. Technically, there was also Miss McCoy. Yeah. Sent her his evidence. Uh, why would I? Hmm. I should present the sword. Fuck it. Commander White, you testified that the victim was killed using the defendant's magical sword. Am I correct? Yeah, pretty obvious when you look at the crime scene. I think I'd actually have to disagree with you on that. The defendant's sword couldn't have possibly been the murder weapon. What are you talking about, kid? The sword was inside his body. Of course that's what killed him. That may be the case, but take a look at the autopsy report. It's because of the, the, the transmutation magic, right? I noticed that, but I didn't think that's what we we're going to go off immediately. Because, I don't know, the way, the way they worded that made me think it was going in a different direction. It's fine, I'm stupid. It says that the fatal wound had heavy traces of magic. So how would a non-magical sword leave traces of magic on the body? 
<laughs> what? Mm. Did I leave a trace like that? The world would have had to have been created with something magical. My client's sword may look fancy and expensive, but it is entirely mundane. <sighs> that doesn't make a lick of sense. If the sword didn't kill him, then why was it in the body? Yes, I find that quite strange as well. Well, there's only one reasonable explanation, Your Honor. The wound was created magically. And someone shoved the sword into the wound afterwards. The hell are you talking about? The defendant is a damned mage. She could have easily killed the victim using magic. That may be, Commander. But why would she kill the victim using magic and then stab him with her sword? She would just be incriminating herself. No, if anything, this series of evidence proves one thing. Someone used magic to kill the victim. And then they pushed my client's sword into the wound to frame her. Objection. Oh shit. Don't get ahead of yourself. Well, Your Honor, the defense is trying to spin the facts in his favor. It's almost like that's his job or something. He claims a third party committed the crime and used the sword to frame the defendant. Could one of the simpler explanations be this? Magic was being channeled through the sword at the time of the death. That is what left the magical trace on the body. Commander, please tell defense how the murder was committed using magic. Whoa. Alright. Alright. I think I see where you're going with this. It's true that the sword itself ain't magical, but magic can still be channeled through it. The defendant over there, her spell compendium, has a spell called Age Blade. She must have used it on her sword before stabbing the victim. That spell is the reason why there's traces of transmutation magic on the wound. I'll stick with that voice, I think. It's much easier to do. So a spell companion contains a spell called Mageblade. Spell companion is a magical device that lists every special spell a mage is able to cast. Luckily, Celeste's compendium only contains one spell. That means she can only cast that one spell. Celeste. Celeste, do you have your spell compendium with you? No. Oh, I left it at the tavern after... Well, you know. If you can't look at the description for Mageblade, you'll have to approach this another way. The Commander Smith's testimony was a lot vaguer this time. If you compress his statements, you might be able to find new information you can use against him. Like what? Right, okay. I imagine it'll still be channeled through it. Are you saying that my client used a spell and channeled it through her sword? There are a vast number of spells that operate like that. Spells from the School of Transmutation are almost always channeled through an object. Mage Blade. It's a transmutation spell that sharpens my sword. I usually use it when I need to cut through an enemy's plate armor. I when I said she led such a... Lethal lifestyle. But anyways, wouldn't it be excessive for the defendant to use a spell like that on the victim? He wasn't wearing any kind of armor at the time of death. The victim and the defendant were in an intense argument. Perhaps she used the spell in a fit of rage. It was a crime of passion, after all. Uh, that theory's a little far-fetched. But you'll need hard evidence if you want to disprove it. Why would she go to the trouble of doing that? Her sword alone could have been enough to commit a murder. Mages are always looking for an excuse to throw their power around. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Isn't that just your own personal bias, Commander? We don't need to understand why the defense did what she did. The fact of the matter is that magic was present at the crime. Do you have any evidence of the contrary? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. 
If she used a spell like that, wouldn't that have created traces of magic on the ground? Oh, so. Well, let's say we follow the prosecution's theory. That would mean that the victim fell to the ground with the sword still inside him. At this point, Mage Blade would still be active, right? It would definitely leave a magical trace on the ground after Mace making physical contact with it. We're already way ahead of you. <laughs> we had our people scan the crime scene. When we found traces of transmutation magic on the ground, just like he said. Oh. If you still don't believe me, I have a picture of the crime scene and the scam. Right here. Oh, why was this picture not brought to my attention? There is no need. This entire case is open and shut. <sighs> You've seen pictures of the dead before, but it feels a little different now that the body is of someone you knew. Looks like there are traces of our traces of magic. Is there? Is that the gold stuff? I thought that was glass. How can you tell where magic be? This shape is a little weird, isn't it? <gasps> what was that just now? Right, this photo does show that he was stabbed from the front. Why do I feel like there's something wrong about this picture? This would be a lot easier if you knew the parameters of Age Blade. Perhaps I can get Let's look at our evidence. Sat from behind with a magical blade. Well, yeah, didn't they just say he was stabbed from the front? Let me make sure you said that. I'm gonna go away through, through this. She killed him with a stab from the front. Oh, yeah, uh, no. Objection! Let's do this! I'm sorry, Commander White, but it seems that you've presented another glaring contradiction. Oh, uh, yeah? And what's that? You said that my client stabbed the victim from the front? Am I correct? Yeah, you can see it, plain in that picture. So where's your contradiction? That's the thing, Commander. Your picture clearly shows the victim that the clearly shows that the victim was stabbed from the front. But the autopsy report says that he died from stab from the behind. <laughs> what? Objection. Holman, you were supposed to release everything that you had. Why wasn't this photo given to me? Uh, there was no need. There's no way it could have been anyone other than that damn mage. The rumors rang out across the gallery. It didn't matter how corrupt the justice system was, they wouldn't be able to cover up such a blatant competence. You have them right where you want them. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Cuthbert, what is the meaning of this? I'll tell you what the meaning behind this is, Your Honor. As the autopsy report states, the victim died from a stab wound originating from his back. But this photo clearly shows that the sword entered from his front. This can only mean one thing. The sword was inserted into the wound after the fatal wound had already been created. That's crazy! Do you honestly expect us to believe that? Then please, enlighten me, Commander White. How else would the sword be facing the opposite way? Do you think my client stabbed the victim with the hilt of a sword? I didn't think so. What really happened is clear. The real murder weapon stuck through the sword 
stuck the sword through the victim's wound to implicate my client. But they made a careless mistake and struck the sword through the opposite side. Objection! Hmm, it appears that I underestimated you, Mr. Cuthbert. But you've still gone ahead of yourself. How so? Really, Miss Tilbury? I'd have thought that Mr. Cuthbert had adequately cast it down on your case. Oh, and did he now? Let me ask you one question, Mr. Cuthbert. If your client didn't kill Flinard McCoy, then who did? How should I know? If I'm not mistaken, it's the commander's job to figure that out. Oh, I'm well aware of the commander's incompetence. But one fact still stands. There was magic detected on the wound and the sword. Would you like for me to tell you how many mages live in that small town? I don't like where I'm going, where she's going with this. Just one. There's only one registered mage in that entire town. And that mage is your defendant. What? The defendant was also established to have been with the victim hours before his death. She was the last known person with him and she was the only mage there. And then we coupled that with the witnesses who heard them arguing. Uh, how she murdered the victim is simply an unanswered question. I see. That has changed matters. I can't say the prosecution's evidence is irrefutable, but there is still evidence that casts guilt upon the defendant. Damn it, you almost had it! There are far too many unanswered questions for me to pass a verdict. We'll give a law enforcement time to clear these unknowns. I suggest that they conduct their investigation more thoroughly this time. We will still resume the trial, the trial morning tomorrow. Court is adjourned. Okay. We, we got an extra day. Um... As much, Ruby, you know I would love to be talking to you right now. It, nothing would make me happier. 40 minutes into the episode, gonna have to end it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Next time, though, I, I promise. I'm green. <laughs> it's, it's just a big guy, I promise. Uh, she, she is good pose and anyway we're gonna whew. yes i am actually going to have an, end the episode now uh excited doing trials very tired I'm, I'm 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 excited to play more of this though let's let's uh let's do this we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do court. We're gonna. We're gonna do. We're gonna heckin' solve solve a murder. Yeah. What the fuck? Bye.